Welcome to the session Measure KPIs with Point and Click. My name is Astrid Feige. I am a Salesforce consultant and trainer and have been working with the Salesforce platform since 2004. Before we jump in, please have a look at our sponsors. Without them, this event wouldn't have been possible. Take the time to visit their booths in the exhibition area. Also, make note of our charity partners. Please let me remind you again that the event is raising money for the COVID-19 Resilience Fund of Mercy Corps. So feel invited to donate generously. Good, so let's get started. Measuring KPIs is a big topic. The first challenge is surely to define your KPIs in a measurable way. However, once done, measuring KPIs in Salesforce is all about reporting. Who doesn't want a nice dashboard where you can see in one glance how the business is behaving? And best, even on the mobile phone. So where do we start? Let's start with the obvious. You cannot report in, on things in Salesforce that are not in Salesforce. Duh, you might think. Well, but let's have a closer look. Maybe it's not that duh at all. Yes, you need your data in Salesforce. Data that isn't in Salesforce can't be reported on in Salesforce. And yes, your relationship model defines which objects can be combined in a report. However, there are other things. There are measuring points. And if these measuring points aren't set up properly in Salesforce, you can't leverage them in reports. So what you report on, or what you can report on, doesn't just depend on data and relationship model, but on your configuration. We could discuss this forever, of course, but let's focus on three questions that you might get asked by the business as that we take as use cases. So number one, how long is our sales cycle? And I want the length of the sales cycle from the date the lead has been created to the date the opportunity has been closed. Number two, how many open cases do we have week by week? And number three, how long does it take to get our opportunities approved? So these are three KPIs that we want to measure and we take as examples. How do we answer these questions? We answer them by a combination of reporting tools, automation and the use of formula fields. First, let's have a look what do we have in Salesforce already. We do have several true-false tags, like for example on leads, the converted yes or no, on opportunities closed or won, yes or no, and on cases tags like open, closed or escalated. We also have further fields, for example, the converted date on leads or last stage change date, stage duration and opportunity or the age on cases. And apart from that, there are fields like created date and last activity date, the last activities, yes, that is um, available in reports. Good, so let's have a look at use case one. What do we want? We want the length of the sales cycle from the second or from the date the lead has been created to the date when the opportunity is closed. Theoretically, we can use the standard report type leads with converted lead information. We do have a created date and we do have an opportunity close date. So we could create a row level formula lead to cash that captures the number or that calculates the number of dates, days in between. That's all good. However, what if we want to see other information? What if we want to see if it depends on product. So if we need to see the number of days with opportunities and products or opportunities and contact roles or opportunities, whatever, then this standard report type isn't enough because we're always tied to leads with converted lead information. 
So what can we do? What are solutions? Let's have a look at the sales cycle. So on lead, we have the created date and on opportunity, we have the close date. Unfortunately, when I convert a lead, the created date is not taken across, that is lost. How can I solve this? Very easy. I create my own field for lead created date. I create that on lead and I create the corresponding field on opportunity. I map these two and then I create a formula that calculates on opportunity the number of days between lead created date and opportunity close date. Very, very easy solution to our question. The only thing that we need to solve is how do we populate this lead created date? We can't use a formula to replicate it because formula fields are not available for lead conversion. But what can we do? We can create a simple automation that says, dear Salesforce, whenever a lead is created, please update my custom lead created date with today. So very, very easy. And therefore we can measure what we need to measure. So let's summarize. We create fields for lead created date in lead and in opportunity. We create an automation that duplicates the standard created date field in the lead. So a field update where we, for example, set the lead created date to today. And then we create a formula on opportunity that measures the number of days in between. Could be a very simple formula if the opportunity is not closed, take today minus lead created date. If it is, is closed, then take the closed date minus lead created date. And of course, I could become more complex. I could say, well, I also want to measure that for opportunities that didn't start out at leads as leads. So I, if it wasn't a lead before, I want the opportunity created date. And I could, for example, also say, I don't want to take the close date as a measuring point because my salespeople can fill in everything in there. I want to use the date where they actually close the opportunity. So where they actually set the stage to one or lost. And I can fill that field, that date field, of course, again, by an automation and a more complex formula could look something like this. So if the lead created date is blank and the opportunity is not closed, then take the created date from the opportunity. If it is closed, use the date closed by user and not the official close date and so on and so on. Good, now let's have a look at our second use case. Our second use case is our support director wants to know how many open cases do we have per week? Why does she want to know that? Because she wants to use historic data to help her with scheduling, with resourcing and to predict peaks. So she wants to find out, do we need this many people? Or do we need that many people at any given time? So what I can easily report on in Salesforce is how many cases have been created at any given date point, because I do have the standard fields, date time opened or open date. So I could easily say in week one, we have created five, in week two, two, in week three, three cases. However, that is not what she wants. She wants the total of open cases in any given week. So she wants a snapshot over time. How can we report on historic data in Salesforce? Well, there are several options and which option we use depends on what we want to achieve. There is surely field history reporting. So per object, I can mark up to 20 fields for history tracking. And once I've done that, I, they are available for history reports. 
they have a little a few challenges however challenge number one is that a report on field history tracks every change so if a field has been changed multiple times or if multiple fields have been changed in the record for any given time period then of course i get multiple rows in my report and on the same note but the other way around i only get entries in my report if anything has changed at all if nothing has changed if no one has touched the record for a given time period then it doesn't appear in my reports Another option I have is historical trending reports. Once set up and implemented, I get a new report type that I can use to create box standard reports. However, they have limits as well. Limit number one, I can only track a maximum of eight fields. That might be fine, but I might need more. And limit number two, I can only compare a maximum of five date values that go a maximum of three months back. If our support director is happy with that, we could try and use historical trending. But for my use case now, I assume she is not. She wants to go up to 12 months back and she wants it weekly, week by week by week. So I'm tempted to despair, but I'm not because I know Salesforce has another option and this other option is called reporting snapshot. They are brilliant. Why? Because they allow me to build my own kind of data history tracking just with point and click. How do they work? Well, step one, I create a report. In my case, I create the report all open cases and I make sure that I include all the things that interest me or my support director as columns in my report. So the case origin, the priority, case reason. So then in a second step, I create a custom object. I call my custom object open cases over time. And I make sure that for each column of my report, I create a corresponding field. Case origin, case owner, case reason, and so on and so on. So, and then I establish a schedule. So I say to Salesforce, dear Salesforce, please run this report regularly. And regularly, I mean run it every Sunday. And then take the results from that report and push them into this target object, my open cases over time. And use the field mapping I've given you here. The co these columns of the source report map to these fields in my target object. So, and once I've established and saved the schedule, what happens? Whenever the report is run, Salesforce, or I should say the report is run on schedule, Salesforce creates data. For each row of the report, it creates one record. So let's assume in week one, I run my open cases report or the schedule runs my open cases report and it gets 20 results. What happens, it creates 20 entries in my custom object and of course their created date is all the week one schedule date and if in week two on the second schedule i have 30 cases in my open cases report well then it creates 30 entries and they have all the created date of the schedule date in week two and so on and so on so all i'm doing is i'm creating log data. I'm telling Salesforce, do that every week, every day, every month or whatever, and then write the data into an object. And now that I have my data in the object, well, I can report on that object. I have a box standard report type now for my object open cases over time. And of course, I can group the report by whatever I want. 
for example, by created date. Very, very easy and very, very, well, easy and brilliant and effective. Good, let's look at our third use case. Our third use case was we want to know how many days are our opportunities in approval. Why? So let's assume on opportunity, we have a field called discount. And before someone can send an offer or a proposal price quote to a client, they need to have the discount approved. So what happens when I create an approval process in Salesforce? I get automatically a wonderful um, list here called approval history. And that approval history tracks step by step by step. When was the step initiated, respectively finished, and who has approved, it tracks comments, and so on and so on. And of course, I can report on that approval history. When I try that, I realize I can't do it with a standard report type. There is nothing. So I have to create a custom report type for that. Where my process instance is my primary object and my pro, uh, secondary object is my process instance node, so the steps. If I do that, I get the following fields that I can use in reports. And I can at any time, of course, report on elapsed days, hours, or minutes. And I can do that for the whole process, or I can do that for the process steps. If that is all we need, brilliant, problem solved. However, what if we want to find out variances of the length of approval processes? What if we want to see if it takes longer in one, one region versus the other region, or if it takes longer for one product versus the other product? What can we do? Well, easy. Again, we just fall back onto the solution that we did for our first use case. We create fields for approval start date and approval end date in our object, in my case, or our use case here, that's the opportunity. We use approval process of actions to update the field. So for example, when someone submits for approval, we update the approval start date with today. And for the final approval actions or rejection actions, we update the end date. And then, of course, we can uh, create a formula that calculates duration in between. So which tool or which option you use depends on what you want to achieve. One more thing about approval processes. Um, they often have the challenge that my users forget to submit for approval. What can I do in this case? Well, how do I make it happen? I can either use a process to auto submit. So I can say as soon as the discount um, is filled in and is greater than zero, then the process automatically kicks off the approval process. Or I could say I create a validation rule where I say my users cannot progress to a next stage if the status or if my approval isn't approved. So that is that for me, short time only. We could, like I said at the beginning, spend hours diving into nifty options for combinations of report tools, configuration, automation. But the point of the session was to introduce you to the topic and to encourage you to go exploring trailblazer style. So, and with this, let's look at the chat and let's look at the questions.